Thank you for coming in again. Good afternoon. So let's uh, begin with PPI, which came in today, and then we can always go back and try and link up with uh, CPI. So that number coming through at 5.0%, uh, I think that's bang in line with what the market was expecting. Just maybe the composition of what we, how we ended up at that number. Yeah, well, it's down from last month's 6.4%. Uh, and the key driver of PPI is been petroleum products, chemical uh, coal-based products, uh, which are, are down from 10.7% uh, last month to 8.3% this month. Right. Uh, so if we took those out of the PPI, we'd actually see a flat PPI uh, at about 5.3% uh, without, without the drop in the chemical products. Counteracting that yeah. has been an increase in food products. Uh, so there we've seen uh, an increase from 4.5 to 4.8 uh, from last month to this month. Uh, and again, if we had to take um, food products out, uh, we would have seen um, a, a, a drop in the in the PPI as well, of from 6.8 to 5.8. Right. So definitely, we're seeing some pressure coming through uh, the PPI uh, in from food. Yeah. Uh, we also see that happening in the PPI for agriculture, yeah. for example. Yeah. And we're seeing similar things in the CPI. So with food, yeah. you can actually see quite a nice chain effect right. uh, of of inflation. Absolutely. And uh, when you look at the month-on-month -month picture. Well, the month-on-month -month picture, uh, as I mentioned, is, is largely about uh, oil and, and chemical products. Yeah. Uh, so these are, these are driving the month-to-month -month changes at the moment right. on the PPI. Yeah. And uh, when you then try to uh, look forward, we know what has been happening with uh, the international oil prices. We also have been taking a, a look at uh, where the rand has been trading. It's sort of steady, isn't it? So we shouldn't really mm -hmm. expect any sort of uh, a big acceleration in inflation. Yes, look, I'd say on, on the PPI side, it does yeah. depend a lot on uh, what's happening in a variety of markets. You know, the PPI is looking at a variety of manufactured goods, yeah. uh, which, which, yes, uh, the feedstock of, of quite a few of those are oil prices. Uh, but, but obviously, the, you know, there's agricultural products, there's wood products yeah. uh, and the like, uh, metal products. Uh, so we have seen quite a lot of increase in metal prices, for example, on the mining side. Yeah. That could possibly feed through over yeah. a longer term. Uh, also, what's important on PPI is that we don't necessarily see immediate impact because yes. uh, it's a value chain. People may have bought stock at different points in time. Yes. Uh, and so the feed through is, is, is sometimes over a number of months. Yeah. Explain why we have you in studio here, the connection between CPI and PPI, because we do see at the moment uh, PPI is higher than CPI. Yes. So look, CPI is what consumers are buying. All right? Right. It's the price that they're paying for goods or services that they purchase yeah. uh, all the time. So uh, in South Africa, some of those we, we manufacture locally or we grow uh, locally, uh, a lot we import. All right. Um, and consumers have a wide range of choice, yeah. uh, but we also consumers are constrained economically, and so uh, retailers and service providers have to manage their margins, uh, the prices that they can push through. Yeah. Uh, so if we're seeing PPI at a slightly higher rate, yeah. uh, obviously it's only those goods that are, are manufactured locally, yeah. but it also means that the cost pressures uh, for manufacturers may be at a higher level than retailers and service providers are able to pass through yeah. to the final consumer. Yeah, so we often hear uh, economists talk about uh, demand uh, push inflation, then cost push inflation. Explain the difference and explain what you're seeing in terms of that picture out of the numbers that we've seen uh, so far. Yes, yeah, certainly. So what they call demand pull inflation is yeah. essentially when consumers are increasing their purchasing power yeah. and they're able to buy more, they're able to spend more, prices are able to increase uh, because consumers are generally willing to pay more uh, oh, oh. than they were previously. Yeah. Um, that's really what the Reserve Bank tries to target with inflation targeting yeah. is the demand side of it. Uh, cost push inflation is when the input costs increase. Yeah. So if we take food as a simple example, if there's a drought, uh, agricultural prices go up, yeah. the price of manufactured food items increase, yeah. that's a cost to the farmer, it's a cost to the, to the manufacturer. Uh, they have to see if they can pass those costs on through to the retailer. Yeah. So certainly if we look at food again, because it's a nice clear example that most people can relate to, yes. um, we are seeing costs increasing quite substantially on the agricultural side and on the manufacturing side. Right. Um, and we've started now, if we look at meat for example, um, meat, meat has increased both uh, at agriculture, the, the carcasses uh, which are uh, measured in manufacturing have, have increased. We've seen for the first time a positive year-on-year um, -year rate for meat in yeah. PPI yeah. and also this month the first time in five months a positive year-on-year -year rate for meat in CPI. Sure. So you can start to see some of those coming through and, and, a, and a not that long ago yeah. meat was in negative, it was in deflation. <laughs> uh, now we're starting to head into inflation yeah. um, and there are a number of items as well uh, where, where we're starting to see swings, uh, maize prices have, have increased Increasing. quite substantially yeah. over the period and maize is not only for human consumption, it's it also feeds the animals. Well. 
Sure. Therefore, there's a knock-on effect. Absolutely. You know, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find a consumer who will tell you that meat prices have been in deflation. <laughs> Consumers don't always know uh, exactly what they're paying over a long period of time. Absolutely. So when you look at those trains going forward, are you seeing, just give me a general sense in terms of what you're seeing, are we seeing an acceleration in both sets of uh, inflation numbers, PPI as well as CPI? What are you seeing? Yes, well, look, I think if we look at the underlying factors, uh, let's yeah. talk about CPI, which obviously includes services, yeah. which the PPI does not. Uh, one of the things anchoring CPI at a much lower level at the moment is, is housing costs. Housing costs make up about 18% of the overall CPI. Uh, that's at about 4%, uh, 3%, uh, sorry, 3.3% this month. Yeah. Uh, so that's really anchoring it at a much lower level, and there's no indication that uh, those are going to change anytime soon. They've come down from a, from a high of almost 5%. Yeah. Uh, so, so by counteracting that is, is the food prices that we've discussed. Yeah. Uh, we don't know what oil and the rand is gonna going do, to do, which obviously that impacts on CPI from a month to month yeah. basis. Absolutely. Uh, so it's a bit of a mixed basket. Absolutely, and that's why you see the Reserve Bank being so vigilant in terms of what it does with those interest rates. Uh, Patrick, thanks very much for coming in. That's a pleasure. That's uh, Patrick Kelly, uh, Chief uh, Director at uh, Statistics South Africa.